Hey there, it's Universe. This month was hot. An incredible number of creative ideas were published and some unusual updates were released. This will probably be the best monthly wrap up I've ever made. So my friend, watch it carefully. You don't want to miss any of these mods. Starting the list with particular, a cosmetic client-sided mod in Ritual Nature in Minecraft. Unsolving the mod means that you will have animated cascades in your world. You may recognize this feature from Dr. Rat's effective mod. Not just the cascades, but the splash effects have also been inspired by the same mod. Particular also includes dynamic falling leaves. As you observe them falling, you'll notice an additional animation for when they hit the ground. This mod has more to offer including droplets effects on the water, along with the scenic fireflies visual during nighttime. For simply enhancing the aesthetics aspect of the game, this mod is the one to consider. Builders out there will appreciate this mod, as it gives you a few supplementary decorations to beautify the interiors of your house. Amongst these decorations are one made with stone, wood, quartz and many more variants. The mod also gives you the ability to customize the outlook of some of these blocks, hammering them into different shapes and even connecting them with one another. The mod is a recent project, so expect plenty of features and blocks to be added. Goblin's Tyranny aims to introduce a new race to your world, those being goblins. Some of these guys are peaceful merchants. You'll trade valuable items for different kinds of mushrooms. Others can be spotted guarding a post, although the one I found here was pretty empty. So yeah, that's a free outpost right there. The biggest structures in the mod seems to be the camps. Here, big guardians, Weaponsmiths and archers are all goblins you'll come across as you enter this place. I would not say that they will welcome you with open arms, as they will try to kill you inside. So unfortunately, I had to slaughter the entire village, but I'm pretty sure that one day, one day goblins and humans will be friends. But if Tim then, well, die. The finest weapons, armors and steampunk devices can be obtained through trading or stealing from the goblins. And I'm so proud of the author for his work. I've been seeing his progress on Discord and quite honestly I was shocked with the final result. Best of luck my friend. Zombie vs Plants is one of the most popular games of all time. Our next mod here aims to simulate the set game inside of Minecraft. These plants are quite powerful. Some can bite a chunk of your enemies. Others will spit poison and some are straight up miniguns. To maintain and nurture these plants, you will need to make some trades with the gardener. He'll provide items that will help in healing the plants, along with some tools that will make you able to displace any of the said plants. Bread is one of the most vanilla friendly gun mod. The bullets, guns and the gun parts are all craftable in Minecraft. The mod is the perfect combination of subtle and impressive. As you shoot down mobs, empty rounds will be thrown on the ground. Not to mention how dynamic both the animations and the handle of the guns are. Although they're not 3D, that's a part of them being vanilla friendly, as they will not require a capable PC to render their complex models. The mod is a perfect option for replacing the medieval ranged weapons such as the bow and the crossbow with powerful armaments such as the shotgun and the autogun. In addition to what was mentioned, Bren is a fabric mod, which is quite rare. Most of the time, Gun mods are strictly for force, so it's quite delightful to see more favorite gun mods. Animal armor trims makes it possible to trim horse armors too. The method remained the same, and some of these horse armor trims can look very charming. If used in 1.20.6 upward, this mod can allow you to trim wolf armors as well, so it's a great vanilla plus mod to have around. Picture this. A behemoth desert scorpion with four legs on its side, a sharp pair of pincers, and a big pointy stinger on its rear. Disgusting. But wait, there is more. With an even bigger stinger, bigger legs, and bigger size overall, both monsters will fight you side to side in this arena, and you will have to bring some milk so that you can counteract their deadly poisoning. Not all the insects in this mod are out to get you. Some of them are actually peaceful, and the animations are just phenomenal. The Arthropocalypse mod is well organized, with each mob spawning in its specific biome, making the whole experience feel incredibly immersive and quite structured. 
Immersive Aircraft is back on the scene with a huge update featuring a brand new aircraft. This new aircraft is a warship equipped with four engines in the back, tunnel fins to reduce air resistance, and a large storage system to carry as much ammunition and provisions as possible. Oh, did they mention ammunition? Yeah, it's called the warship for a reason. This aircraft can completely demolish any mob that walks on Earth, dropping 14 T-bombs at once and causing devastating damage to its targets. This new update was well worth the wait, and the models, animations and functionality of the new warship are immaculate, and I'm eager to see what's ahead. Boasting a large catalog of creatively designed armors and weapons, Night Quest is a mod that will reignite your passion for armaments in Minecraft. Some of these armors and weapons are inspired by outsider video games, and are also strong enough to sustain a thrilling battle and a beautiful appearance at the same time. Immersive winds makes the smoke in Minecraft reactive to the wind around it. As a thunderstorm begins, the smoke from the campfire will be heavily drawn to a specific direction, and as the weather improves, the smoke starts to gradually stabilize. This dynamic effect is applied to the burning of blocks too, and this part combines both simplicity and realism. Get ready to engulf in an interesting and mysterious adventure, as we will be discovering a world of radiation and toxicity. Needless to say, this place is filled with a lot of radioactive mobs. Some are stronger than others, but all will pause on you upon damage. With time, you would have advanced in the mod just enough for you to wear an appropriate suit designed to resist the pausinous atmosphere of this place. This is a new concept of mods mimicking video games such as Fallout, and I have a pretty good feeling about it. Armored Doggo expands upon the Minecraft newly added Wolf Armor. First and foremost, the wolves received an increase in bleeds, so you will encounter them with different textures. To the armors now, these are some models and animations that I frankly never seen in any other mod before. You will notice things like a spinning wheel on the back of the wolf, parts of the armors reacting to the wind, or even sticking out of the armor and moving independently. In addition, you could dye the said armors, boosting their aesthetics a tiny bit. The armors here aren't just for show, since they are a lot stronger than the conventional wolf armors, making them an excellent addition, visually and functionally as well. End remastered, and not this one, but this one adds two new biomes to the end. Due to Mojang not updating the end for several years now, this mod could prove useful. The new biomes look magnificent, especially with the shaders such as Choka Peak 13. And throughout the gameplay, I also noticed a special soundtrack. Here, take a listen. Not gonna lie, I glanced through similarities between this mod and the Better End mod, but they're not significant enough for me to call it a copycat, or else I would not be including it here. Rustic Engineering provides three steampunk machines in Minecraft. The first is the Mechanical Spider, which is able to swiftly climb hills, making it an ideal transportation method. During combat, this spider isn't that useful offensive-wise, but rather defensive-wise, as it will spit and poop cobwebs, ultimately crippling the movement of the mobs. Wooden Cube is a small robot that you can activate using a certain key. This minion is helpful only if you mount a chest on it, otherwise it will just follow you around, serving no particular purpose at all. Airship is an efficient transportation method, even better and faster than the said mechanical spider, as it can skip mountains, rivers or any obstacles you could name. The ship also provides a storage system, I tried so hard but I couldn't open the GUI for the chest, so I do hope that you also look into this bag and fix it. The mod is very unique and makes me feel more and more proud for being a part of this community where most authors strive to be creative and think outside of the box. If you've been watching my channel long enough, you would know that I kinda despise Cave Dwellers mod. It was fun at first, but then at really another mods were released on the same topic. Siren Head mod, however, stood out to me. The concept of the mod was based on an already interesting and terrifying concept and the animations 
models and sounds are quite accurate and seems effortful. The model will present this tall monster, which is the siren head. The head of this monster is basically a siren composed of two mouths. It spins abruptly and makes weird noises from time to time. As the monster senses a player nearby, it starts creating the notorious loud siren. The siren head destroys anything on its path and will cause a rumbling effect as it walks. One hit by this creature is a kill shot. It's quite fast too, so you may want to be careful. Realistic Cobwebs has been outdated for well over 4 years now. Finally, it made a return updating to 1.20.1. So instead of sluggishly destroying cobwebs with swords, you can simply torch them. In addition, you could destroy an entire vein of cobwebs using flint and steel. Giving said flint and steel a useful functionality. This mod will be a lifesaver whenever you get stuck in a cobweb. And will also ease the removal of these blocks, ultimately streamlining the process of traversing on the caves. Very often in my videos, I use the Lucky's Wardrobe mod to enhance my character's aesthetics. But quite recently, I discovered a similar mod, which is Cakes Cosmetics. The mod will include a variety of new hats and other pieces of clothes. These cosmetics are inspired by different movies, cultures and fantasies. And although simple and honestly useless in combat, these clothes can help quite a lot if you are trying to make a cinematic movie for example since each one of them tells a story and portrays a character. The Ink Arena is a newly added boss fight mod with a new structure similar to a Mayan temple. As you mine the entity in the middle, your quest begins. You'll have to endure several waves of ink monsters. The first wave is fairly easy, having to exterminate a few weak ink creatures. As you progress though, the waves become increasingly harder up to the point where you'll have to fight tens of creatures at once, in addition to some large behemoths such as the Ink Titan. After finishing all of the waves, a mob will arise from within the Ink Hole, which is the Ink Boss, Blot. Blot's strongest ability is smearing your screen with ink. He'll also summon a bunch of minions to help him. Frankly, Blot is quite weak, but he has a lot of HP and will give you a hard time regardless. Upon defeat, Blot will drop two new weapons, one used for swiftly escaping the area and the other will help you in combat as it inflicts ink effects on the targets. Better Fletching Tables mod will make the once useless blocks, those being the Fletching Tables, into workbenches you could actually use to create arrows. You could do things like creating arrows with potion effects in addition to spectral arrows too. In my opinion, the mod doesn't make these blocks any better, since they didn't have any value to begin with, rather it makes them usable. A good place is a very very special mod in the list, and I feel sorry for anyone who clicked off before watching this part. A good place will add a unique place in animations for the blocks, making them look as though they fall into place. Currently the animation is the same for every block. But I suggest that the authors try to create different animations for things like fences, doors, trapdoors and other non-cubical stuff. The mod is new, so we can expect anything. Thanks for watching, I'm so grateful that you made it this far and if you are excited about the 1.21 update, then subscribe. I have a lot of ideas that will make this update perhaps the best you've ever tried.